Hey guys, me here. Today's video is going to be short and simple. Or is it? No, I'm kidding. Today's video is really going to be easy. I'm going to be teaching you about the changed class. I believe it's a class. But, uh, we'll talk about that and I'll show you a few things you could do with it. One being the simple door where it doesn't matter what order you pick these things up in. As long as you collect three of them, you can go in... I don't know, go into this area that has trees. More on uh, that side than that side, but we're not going to talk about my wonderful building. Unless you want to fight, you will lose. <coughs> anyway, sit back, relax, get a drink, and I hope you enjoy today's video. So to get started, first I gotta correct myself. I'm a moron. It's not a class, it's an event. And what exactly you could do with this event is kind of cool. You could detect change. So let's add a value. It will add an int value, which stores a number, an integer, an integer, I cannot speak. So as you can see, we can make this basically whatever number we want. Yeah, I don't know why you'd ever need it to be this number, but we'll just set it back to nothing. We can insert a part into workspace. We'll insert a script into that part. And let me make this bigger. We'll just do script.parent.touch connect function. And we will do hit. We'll do if hit.parent find first child humanoid, then game.workspace.value.value dot value plus equals one script.parent destroy. So when this part's touched, it will add plus one to this value here, which let's let's actually name it. Let's just say uh I don't know. Uh blocks collected. So we'll just change this value here to be blocks collected. It will add plus one to that value and then destroy itself. So we'll make this little part a nice neon looking thing. And we will just add a few of them. So if we play test this and we go into workspace, highlight this uh, parts collected or blocks collected, you can see the value is really high. Holy crap. Let's set that back to zero. Okay. Whoa. All right. <laughs> You can see that the value is zero, but when we touch one of these, it's now one, two, three, and four. So we can just add to this. That on its own is really handy, but this next part's really cool. So if we insert a script into this value, we can do script.parent.change connect function. And now we could just do, okay. So this, the function here, you see how there's like always an option for a parameter. This parameter will return whatever the number, like whatever the value of this uh, int value is. So if we just do uh, number, we can do print number. So we go into uh, workspace and we play it again. You'll see in the output, it'll print the number of parts we picked up. So one, two, three, four. So we could just do like if number double equals four, then uh, we'll do warn. So that's a cool yellow text. Uh, quest completed, for, for example. Because so you could use this to make like a quest system, kinda. I plan to make an actual quest system video, just not yet. Been really busy. I'm moving soon, so yeah. But uh, if you pick up these parts, you'll see nothing happens besides this printing until you touch the fourth one. And now it's quest completed. So say you wanted to make something like the beginning of this video. Well, we just build a wall. So we'll put these here. We'll build a wall. A door. Another wall. We'll make our door darker gray. And because it bothers me to make everything the same, I'm going to make the door be slightly thinner than the wall. For realism. And we'll just name this door part, door. Then instead of our script, which you should name your scripts by the way, you should also save everything you work on. I haven't saved anything because I'm a moron, but uh, yeah. When it says quest completed, we'll just do game.workspace.door, destroy. And now we have a simple collect objects to open door system. Just using that changed value. That's, I mean, that changed event, not value. I just, I can say everything but what it actually is. So it doesn't matter which order you collect these in. 
is it's just counting to see if it's equal to four. When it's equal to four, you can go through the door. I'm Dr. Seuss. I can rhyme. I need to stop. So, now that you know that, you can use uh, this for uh, values like integers, uh, number values. You could use this for bools as well, so you can detect when a bool changes, I believe. Just so I don't have to eat my words later, I'm going to test this. So let's just add a bool value, and we'll insert a script, and let's see if this works. So we'll do script.parent.change, connect function, whoops, function. So this is, yeah, this is vals, uh, bool's value. So I'm going to enter the parameter val, and we'll just do print val, and we'll go into testing. I'll go to the client, I mean the server, because you can't edit this in the client. Now I'm just going to spam change this value. So as you can see, it could detect when it's true or when it's false. So you could easily write a code to detect, like, uh, if val equals true, double equals true, then print completed, else print. Uh, no, we'll do, yeah, we'll do print, nuh-uh. And let's switch this print to be worn. And we'll just blank out this value thing. So this simple little bit of code can detect when it's switched from true to false. And it's just using the changed event. So if we go back to the server, you can see when we check this to be true, it says completed. But if it's not true, it says nah. -uh. That already is very useful. You can use this to detect when the player has done something to progress in the game. Like collect a key to unlock a door. You could do stuff like that. Or you could do what I just did and... You could have parts where you collect certain objects that will let, unlock the next area of the map. You know, stuff like that. There's also another kind of change, which you've probably seen somebody explain it. It's a method, I believe, rather than uh, an event. So, say we had this part. And I want to detect the color rather than, I don't know. So we have this part. But you can't apply change to the part, I don't think. I mean, it wouldn't be smart to, because it's going to return a lot of information if it worked. I don't, I, I think they made it so these only work on values, but I might be wrong. I'll have to do more research. But uh, say I wanted to detect the color changing on this part. You could do that using the uh, get property change signal method, which is just as easy as everything I showed you, except... It's just longer to spell. So we right here we could do script.parent get property change signal color connect function. Now I'm not sure why you'd want to get the color, but just in case you did, we could do print script.parent.color. So if we go into testing, press play, and we go to server, we click this part, and we change the color. Huzzah! It's returning. What looks like a lot of information, but it's just the color values. Now, I'm not sure why you'd want this, but you can do that. And what makes property, uh, get property change signal special is you can get a specific property. So, you know how when you click on, I don't know, value, you can see there's properties. There's name, parent, and there's value. Value is a property. So, the, the changed uh, event just monitors the value. Get property change signal can monitor any uh, property. So if you click on this part, all of these things that are in here are properties. Position, rotate, I don't know, position, scale, rotation, everything is like a property. I, I heard that you shouldn't use uh, these like change or get property change signal for physics, like simulation physics, but uh, I'm not going to talk too much about that yet because that's pretty advanced. I'm just talking about stupid, simple things. But uh, say you wanted to change, detect like If uh, script.parent.color equals color 3 from RGB and it all the way red, then, and don't forget your double equals, that's how you check if something's equal to something, script.parent destroy. So if it becomes red, it will just cease to exist. So if we go in here, we increase this to red. <laughs> there it goes. It's just gone now. 
I don't know why I had to tinker with that so much to get it to work, but uh, yeah. You can do things like that. So just like you have this right here using the change to detect if the value is equal to true, you could just as easy do okay, uh, if game.workspace.value no, game.workspace.value get property change signal, and you can see you could just access the property value. Connect function and now whatever code you run in here, you can do like if game.workspace.value double equals true, then blah, blah, blah. You could just as easily um, edit and detect when the values change using get property change signal as well. And from what I'm seeing, it's not that much of a difference uh, in performance. So it's really to preference. But if you're just detecting values and stuff, you could just use change. And if you want to, you know, look more into the properties other than value, not excluding value, you could use get property change signal. So you could have a little bit of code, which will like FNAF, you know how they have the power doors in FNAF one, you could have it monitor a value as the value slowly decreases. And when it's equal to zero, you don't have power. So open up all the doors. You could do stuff like that very easily. So I know today's video was a bit simple, but I hope somebody could have learned from this. I hope if you were confused, this made things a little less confusing. I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. You have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay, this is uh, very random. I just noticed that somebody purchased my Patreon. And there's been a lot of people joining it. So thank you to everybody who just joined it. Even if it's for the free one. I love the fact that people are doing that. Thank you. Sorry, I got called mid-like thinking. But uh, thank you. And thank you a lot to this like person right here. You did not have to buy that. The dogs are going crazy. You did not have to buy that, but I thank you very much. It makes the stuff I do a lot easier, because, like, oh, the ch okay, they're going insane. My time has come, guys. But, yeah, thank you very much. It makes things so much easier, because, like, now I can buy a McChicken. I won't buy a McChicken, but I can buy a McChicken. So, uh, well, I can actually get two, technically. McDonald's does that. But yeah, thank you very much. I hope I didn't just dox this person. I don't know if you wanted your name out there, but uh, I know I put it in my Patreon that I put your name in the video and in the description. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, comment on my video so I can thank you in person and pin that comment because like I'm still baffled. You did not have to buy that. All right. See you guys. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, night, whatever. I don't know what time it is. I'm stuck in the void still, but uh, thank you. Bye bye. Brush your teeth.